When I speak of the Great Derangement, I'm really referring to the ways in which we, in our time, uh, seem to be unable to confront uh, some aspects of our own ways of thinking about the world. Yet we seem to be unable to accept some very basic predictions that uh, scientists are telling us about, you know, some very basic in, uh, uh, impacts that, that the world is going to face. And we see that uh, in many of the most advanced countries, there's a, actually a whole movement underway to deny uh, you know, these impacts, to deny the predictions of, uh, of cl climate science. The Paris Climate Accord doesn't even use the word disaster, let alone catastrophe. And we see all around us disaster and catastrophe. I think it's no surprise that the people who are actually speaking most eloquently about climate change today are not secular politicians, they're religious figures. Like uh, Pope Francis or the uh, Orthodox Patriarch or the Dalai Lama. Because actually they are tapping into an older tradition which recognizes uh, the fragility of, of mankind. As we all know, climate change is uh, probably going to impact the poor of the world most dramatically. And certainly in the largest numbers, the poor people in the world will be very, very badly affected. But you know, I think it's not a very simple correlation. It's a very complex correlation. I think actually the people who will be hardest hit by climate change often will be middle class people. Italy is a rich country, you know, but just look at what happened in Livorno. You know, suddenly one day there you have this terrible flood, you know. Uh, or you look at the recent drought in Italy. You know, farmers not knowing what to do because their grapes were maturing before. I think above any other place in Europe, Italy had that deep uh, relation with the land. But that is what is gone. You know, and it's happened in the last 20 years. I remember when I first came to Italy in the 80s, you know, parts of it, was, uh, uh, the first part of Italy that I stayed in was Puglia. And the landscape was in many ways so similar to India. You know, there were little boys on buffaloes and uh, making burrata, which you only got in uh, one part of Pulpulia. Now burrata is here. You know, despite slow food and everything, you're, um, they're making burrata in New York. So what has really happened in Italy is this complete leveling. You know, so that those ways of thinking, those ways of knowing, those ways of interacting with the land have disappeared. Today, Italians don't make uh, Parmigiano. They don't make these cheeses. They don't know how. This is made for them by migrants. If you go to Venice, Italians don't make pizza. I mean, in a way, because I visited Italy very often, I've seen it happen in front of my own eyes. Uh, you look at, uh, you know, uh, uh, you look at old films. I, I mean, you just look at uh, Fellini's Amar Cord. You know, look at the faces in that film. You don't see those faces in Italy anymore. They don't exist. Actually, I've been traveling around Italy, uh, visiting, uh, you know, the Centri di Accoglienza and so on, and also the, uh, uh, the, the Cara di Mineo and so on. And it's been very, very interesting because, of course, there's a very important relationship between climate change and the migrant crisis in Italy. If you just look at the numbers of the people who are coming in, many of them are from uh, climate-affected areas, uh, the Sahel, uh, also Bangladesh, so, you know, if you ask any of these migrants that are you a climate refugee, very few of them will ever say yes. You know, because in their own minds, it's a much, much more complicated process. And yet you can, it's just like climate change in general, you know, the imprint of climate change is never very clear, but it's certainly there in the background. Uh, the relationship between literature and reality is necessarily a very complicated one. I think the relationship between human beings and the world that surrounds them has been for, for millennia a very important part of any kind of literary activity. But today we are left with a literature which is incredibly human-centered, which is incredibly cut off uh, from the world around us. 
And it's in many ways really bewildering, you know. Uh, if you think of, say, uh, something like Hurricane Sandy, which devastated New York. New York is home to so many writers, you know, so many filmmakers. And yet, uh, you know, where's the great film about uh, Hurricane Sandy? Where's the great novel about Hurricane Sandy? I think it's because writers have really become very focused on writing about interiority, about inner life. They've become focused on identity issues. They've become, in as much as writers really think about politics, it's really about identity issues. How, uh, how, what kind of politics can we think of that would adequately uh, 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 address climate change? Uh, frankly, I just, uh, I just don't know. I mean, even, you know, I recently read a book. It's called Living in Denial. And it's an ethnographic study of a small uh, town in Norway. They are very politically active on many issues like uh, racial equality, many, um, you know, global poverty and so on. I mean, they're very engaged with those issues. They're very aware of climate change because their own snow has melted away. Now they can't have skiing anymore. And yet the people in this town never speak of climate change. So for me, this was really, uh, this was really kind of a devastating uh, realization that, you know, in that circumstance, extremely wealthy, extremely well-educated, extremely politically aware people are also basically washing their hands of climate change. You know, we should not fool ourselves. This is also a politics, you know? Doing nothing is also a politics. And in a way, the politics that underlies it is, as it were, we are looking away from mass death, you know? We are turning our eyes away from apocalypse in the hope that it won't be us, it will be someone else out there who's going to die and suffer. But as we see, this is not the case, you know? You're, you're not safe anywhere.